Welcome to the Black Men Think Podcast. If this is your first time here, know that the views and opinions expressed by the Black Men Think Podcast, are those of the Black Men Think Podcast and not the individual members. With that being said, we're about to be unapologetically, undeniably black. Enjoy. Yeah, bro, like, just, it, it's been a week, you hear me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think every person I talked to literally said this was like hell week, bro. Bro, I don't know what it is. Like, when you hit me earlier, and like, what time we was going to record, I was like, man, don't make excuses here. Let's just, let's just pick a time and let's just go and do it. But like, man. Don't think it, about it. <laughs> yeah, don't think about it. I don't know, it's just been like. I don't know, bro. Like, it, I can't even, and that's the thing, because even Trina asked me, like, what, you know, everything good? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, <laughs> I, I really can't describe it. Uh, I don't know. It's just probably just that, 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 um, end of the year stuff. You know, you got all kind of things going on toward the end of the year. And then, uh, right. this week here, bro, I just had some projects that, shh. oh, boy. It's just, <laughs> Job be adulting, be adulting, bro. That's really what it is. Yeah, man. My, my brain was like fried, like yeah, legit, exactly. like straight fried egg. Yeah, earlier, man. Just trying to focus. Like I walked in the house. I think I just looked at everybody and shook my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids, everything. Just like y'all just don't know. Y'all don't know where I just came from. <laughs> you just don't know. <laughs> Look, man, it'd be like that, bro. Like, oh man, I was Katrina had to work all day, so I was, I was, um, I was with with um the girls, you know, for the whole day or whatever. And yeah. um, bro, I was just like, yeah, um, I could just go to bed tonight, <laughs> like, man, bro. They were, and they were cool. They weren't doing too much, but bro, I was just like, man, I'm over it. This has just been a week. I am done. I, know, I mean, I, I know, I know the listeners don't have weeks like that where it's yeah. like, bro, it's it's the weekend. Pour me one mm. now, <laughs> right now. Right. Right. I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little bro. forward to uh, trying to get some sleeping in. But we did land on the topic. You know what I mean? So, for sure. I, I got one. I got one question for you. Is church really still necessary? Mm. Post pandemic. Post pandemic. Well, yeah, we talking about post pandemic. Post pandemic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw my personal opinion out there, man. Um, and this this might ruffle a lot of feathers, but nah, mm. it's not. Let's talk it's about not. it. Let's talk about it. So, and we got to dive in to give context to what I mean, right? So, um. Well, let, let, let's recap. So obviously, you know, shutdowns happened and right. churches closed. Some stayed open despite the realities of spreading and COVID and, and right, no right. social distancing. Some stayed open on, on reasons that ain't had nothing to do with God or religion or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, some, some stayed open because they needed to keep that check rolling in. Correct. Some stayed open because they were too prideful to put masks on and, you know, and so on and so forth. But for the majority of us who had any type of church experience before all this stuff popped off, right. um, church became a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, it became a um, a WebEx, you know, moment where you got to see how non-technological <laughs> a church really is. Uh. <laughs> and granted, some of our churches had like real you know, straight up Warner Brothers Studios productions happening right. during, exactly. during the pandemic. There were some of those that like, they got the bread and butter to do so. You felt like you were watching a concert every Sunday, you know, yep. like like the like the Drake and, and Kanye concert, you know, right. live from, from LA Coliseum. But right, right. every church is not built that way. And some of us got to see, you know, pastors scrolling through the Zoom calls <laughs> and saying, hey, to, to sister so-and-so, Bro, you know hey. Sister Betty on here today. Hey, Sister Betty, you want to say something? Hey, so, all right, real quick, real quick. My my oh, mother-in-law, um, her church is like, 
a very historic church, right? So it's it's like okay. one of the oldest churches in Augusta. And it's just, you know, it, they just not up to par with the technology, bro. So like, <laughs> I don't even mean to laugh. I, I hope she'll get mad at me, but it's funny. <laughs> so like one day we were down oh. in, in Augusta and she was like, yeah, we about to do, um, about to do Bible study. <laughs> And I was like, okay, cool. Y'all going into the church? You're like, no, we're doing it. We're doing uh, on the phone. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, okay, they about to do Zoom. This is what I'm thinking. And she was like, no, it's a um, phone no, conference right. line. They about to do it. <laughs> okay, conference line. Oh, <laughs> man. Conference line, bro. But, which is still okay. You can figure it out. But <laughs> when you just hear people that don't really operate that way, trying to operate yeah. that way, and it's just like, no, nah, this ain't it, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll say this, bro. Churches have tried too hard, and it's it's been yeah. proven throughout the pandemic, you know, to to keep rolling, man. And 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 let me let me just dive in, bro, because you asked the question, mm-hmm. you know, is church really necessary anymore? My answer was was no. Let me say why. And, and I, I this is a real like new topic for me. And, and I'm gonna give background to my topic, right? Sure, sure. And the, the listeners have heard, and maybe those who are new to the podcast, welcome, you know, welcome to season two. And I'm, I'm glad you're getting an opportunity to hear uh, something, hopefully that's related to you. But I'm gonna talk about me. I'm a PK. Matter of fact, I'm not just a PK, I'm a pastor's kid, right? Um, I All I knew growing up was church. You know, I knew, you know, Choir practice on Saturdays, you know, at the church cracker done on Sundays, setting up Sunday school, you know, church service, after church service meetings through the week. You got the meeting on whatever so and so day. You got Bible study on Wednesdays. You might have a Friday thing going on. Pretty much like, you know, four or five days out of the week, I might have been either at the church doing something related to church, whole nine yards, right? not a problem whatever that's just my life that's what i grew up in nothing wrong with that i'm not going to say like just because of that there was an issue there wasn't right thankfully one thing i got from it i would say for me personally is the faith that i walk by you know i, I believe in jesus that's what that's who i roll with every day in day out and that's me doesn't mean you have to that's who i roll with um you know i got called to the ministry at some point in my life you know i spent years um in doing different versions of, of a minister from the pulpit minister to the youth pastor to you know it, like kind of flowing it into the music industry and, and using the music that i create to uh to, to to minister to people in a sense right right nothing wrong with that <clears throat> um you know got married um had my kids and my family locked into a church went through some church hurt experiences we yeah. both did yeah. at one point you and i were at the same church right. and we Absolutely. we we got a taste of what a lot of people got a taste of and that's a lot of mess happening in the church right right, right. from from money mismanagement to the pastor having a few of them <laughs> i'm just gonna say a few of them hey these are this just it's real reality yeah, real, real realities, right? You know, and we don't see a lot of stories like that. And, um, you know, and at the end of the day, those type of thing affect a person's perspective experience as it comes to church. Yeah. But let me tell you what the pandemic did, bro. Mm. Talk the about The pandemic it. made me ask one simple question in relation to church. Does it really take all of this? Mm. That's Does real. it really take all of this? You know, I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna drop that one right there and just let people ponder for a second. You know, I'll, I'll pick. I'll pick that up, bro. Because I, I mean, I'll tell you my 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 personal experience during the pandemic. Right. So we were going to a church, and um, great church, great pastor. From I mean, and, and I'm talking when I say great, I mean surface level because we nobody know what's going on behind closed doors until it yeah, happens. For sure. Right? But Absolutely. surface level, you know, it's like, you know, it was getting fed, um, great spiritual spiritual church, and they were doing church differently, right? Like, so it wasn't like your traditional church. So great experience while we were going there. And then, of course, the pandemic happened. And, and when the pandemic happened, everything shut down for everybody, just like we all know. Um, at some, some point in time, 
you know, well, for this particular church, they just kept, you know, they kept the ball rolling. Like, so they were already doing one of that Warner Brothers production that you mentioned. Yeah. That that's the type of church that I was at. Like they didn't, they didn't miss a beat. Oh, y'all can't mm -hmm. come to service. Cool. We already set up for you not to have to be in the building. Like you can have an online experience. You can pay your tithes and offering all of this stuff can happen online. No problem at all. So they didn't skip a beat. And, you know, as time went on and time progressed, we just kind of found ourselves just like, all right, cool. I'm just online looking at church and, and don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, bro. Like nothing will beat that experience of being in the room with everything going on. But you start to realize, or at least for me, what I started to realize is that when you're in the room, I got to the point where I was just looking around. Mm. I was just looking around. Cause I mean, okay. and maybe I was wrong in that, but I was just looking around. I was just like, bro, some don't feel right. And mm. I don't know what that feeling was, but I started to be like, I don't even know if I was worrying about what other people were doing, but it just like, I got to the point where I just started looking around and everybody just seemed like they was putting on a show. Like every, wow. like people just okay. put on the show. Right. And don't get me wrong, bro. We all have our walks, our battles, all of this stuff, right? Like your faith is your faith. I don't question anybody's faith, but you know, it just started to, and a lot of that probably stemmed from, like we said, church hurt, right? Like me and you mm -hmm. both were at a church where we were like deeply involved in the church and we were spending our time there, right. and, you know, things happen. And while there were some good people at that church, things still did happen that make you look at things differently, right? Like your faith doesn't waver, but you started looking at church mm -hmm. differently. And yeah. for me, I've always <clears throat> been a relationship to, to Christ type person. I wasn't really a church person like that. I'm not even like a, a big um, gospel music type person at all. Like I like mm -hmm. certain gospel songs, like certain worship mm -hmm. songs, but it ain't on my like day to day when I'm, I'm rocking. Like I've just it, it's never been like that. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. like never no, really sure. been big like that. So for me, I would go and get a couple of worship songs in, but I was really going for the word. Like that was it. Do you know what I mean? And, and so when I get the word, cool, boom, I'm already reading my Bible and I'm, I'm having my relationship um, from jump. Right. And so when we had this long extended break and then we were able to like really sit back and assess and just like, man, I think I got more of a relationship with Christ now than I ever did while I was in the church. Okay. Talk about that. Talk about it. Like, like what? Cause, cause bro, you just said something like, cause honestly I, I said the same exact thing. And, and me and you are, are kind of different. Like, like you, correct me if I'm wrong, like probably at a certain point, late college career. I mean, granted, you were always in church, right? Your family yeah, was yeah, always yeah. in church. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, I grew, but up, like yeah, late, grew up in church. But maybe like late college career was that point where you feel like you really had like a close relationship with Jesus, right? Am I correct yeah, in saying yeah, that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So like... For me, I was that guy who was like gospel music this and, you know, worship songs. I mean, honestly, like I, I'm a musical guy. I'm a worship mm -hmm. leader. Like that's, 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 I'm bred, built, wired as that. There's nothing I like more than being on stage as it is. Nothing I enjoy more than honestly leading a group of people in worship. Like that's just, that's who I am. That's what I do. So here I am as that person saying what I'm saying today, but I kid you not, bro, like it, the pandemic, we've talked about it before on episodes, right? And we won't harp on the pandemic today, but from this topic, I feel like the pandemic stripped it all down. 100%. It almost like, it almost like pulled apart unintentionally for many because they didn't want it. Yeah, yeah. Pandemic. Oh, but no, it, definitely it, not. It legit pulled apart everything we know as normal and forced us into a situation where we had to question, all right, what's worth it? And what is fluff? 100%. What's extra? What is unnecessary? What is hoopla and presentation? Yeah. You talked about kind of being in a room and looking around and seeing people who you felt, or at least in the moment, it felt like this is a production that, as that, opposed. That's the best way to put it, is a production. Mm. production you know, 
so for me, I think more than anything, man, this time out of the out of the space helped me question what is the space for? Mm. You know, like like what because here's here's the thing. Like let's and and I can keep it real. I can talk um purpose, right? Like, and if we're talking about like the you know, just for those listeners out there who may not be familiar with Christian culture, right? And because that's what we're really talking about. And I mean, your version of church or worship or religion or whatever that is, you can probably relate in some way. So this is a this is a, a, um, a open conversation for everybody, but we're talking in the context of Christian culture. Right, right. right. So for me, church at one point had to do with Sundays, mm-hmm. had to do with a gathering of people, Yep. Worship songs, a message. Right. At the at the at the base. Yeah. Level, I mean, all the other yeah. club, you strip it down. That's what it was, right? You go to church, you get a spiritual message from the Bible. Right. You feed on it spiritually, you walk away, you try to live it. Right? Yep. I started questioning and asking, what about this can what about this can I not do at home? Mm. and the reality is my real answer was as time progressed it became harder and harder to have that my own regimen but along with that time came the reality of it became more and more real to me who I am where I was not depending on anybody else bingo and I feel like Somehow, some way in that, God became more real to me in who I am in my daily life yep. at the crib, as opposed to my life attached to the building. Yep. Now, and something about that felt more genuine than being in the building. I don't know what it is. And I think that's what you alluded to. No, bro, that's, that's exactly where I'm at, too. And, and I'm glad we're having this discussion because my wife and I, we've, we've tried to have this talk. And sometimes I just don't have the words for it. Like, she'll, you know, mm-hmm. ask like, oh, when are we going to look at, you know. Because I'll, I'll give you our personal predicament. Like, my wife works on Sundays now, right? So, for for us, I would be at home watching church with the girls. And then we, we were trying to do, like, some Wednesday night services or whatever. And, and so, mm-hmm. so we don't have that, that church structure as a entire unit, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, all, we still read our scripture and, and you know, on our, on our time. But we don't have that as a family unit going to church. And so I know for her that it's, you know, she's been wanting to find another church. And, and a lot of times when we have those conversations, I really don't have the word. So this conversation is actually helping me figure out how to to have okay. that conversation. Right. And and I think really what you just said, it boiled down to, man, like I have found more of a relationship through being forced to have a real relationship. Right. Mm. It mm. was. Prior to a pandemic, my relationship, though it was real, was based around Sunday, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. everything was leading up to Sunday. And not saying that, I, you know, because those days of like going crazy all week and then trying to clean it up, those days yeah, are long, yeah, yeah. long over with. Right, right, what right, I right. mean sure. by that is it's like everything would be based around a day and not based mm-hmm. around a relationship right mm. and so what this time ha- has really happened to me is like i'm telling you i don't read my bible every day i don't mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. i might read a verse here or there but i don't read my bible every day but what i do do is i pray for people every day okay right okay. and so i started learning that this relationship is more so yes i need that word not denying that but mm-hmm. I'm accepting the flaw of that. This is not something that I do every day, but here's something that I am going to do. I'm going to be in dark places and be that light. Like when I can be around people and they're looking like, bro, like something is different about you. But because mm-hmm. I don't come off as like, and I'm only using this name because it's just a problem. I'm, I'm not coming off as Creflo Dollar, right? Like I'm not coming out holier okay. than thou. I'm just a regular oh, dude yeah, yeah. in the room who just seems different. Like, mm, like, bro, like, wow. you know, like you, something, something about you is different. Like you're not, you're not trying to, 
to do this. You're not trying to do that. You're comfortable in t- saying that you're married and you got kids and you love your wife. You're not trying to chase. You're not trying to do this or what what perceive what what somebody can perceive that a person like me would be into. I'm not into yeah. that. I'm not even. I'm not even showing that off is like that I'm proud or, or not. It's just like natural that people can see nice. it. It's like, man, it's something about you that is different. I had a thing that I was doing when I would take pictures. I would just put prayer hands, right? Super mm-hmm. intentional on my, on my behalf, but other people just like thought it was just like, Oh, you just, do, you know, no, mm-hmm. it's, I do it for a reason. And mm-hmm. so people start to look at that and start to realize like, man, this dude got praying hands in like all of his pictures. What's going on? And then when people would ask me, I would tell them like, no, this is my way of praying for you or praying for, and, and, and sending a message for like, when you see this again, you think about prayer. You don't think about what was going on in the moment of that situation. You think about doing something else. And so I realized that, bro, during the pandemic, I had to learn how to really have a relationship. And what that relationship is, is like, bro, literally come like how, you know, we used to jokingly say, come as you are. Like, no, this is really come as you are, bro. Like, that's real flawed, come frustrated, come like, bro, I ain't reading nothing today. Like, come with all of that and and, and be transparent in what you're coming with. And I think I didn't have that before. I had glimpses of that, but I didn't have that like I have now. Bro, you just touched on something that that low key, like, we can, like, I want to highlight because I feel like a a lot of people are going to get free, like, real quick, right? So, Church used to feel like the like if, like from let me just say from the outer body experience, mm-hmm. looking back, church felt like one of the most unauthentic places I could find on the face of the earth. Bro, that's so real, man. Wow, unauthentic. Like because here's here's the reality, man. Most people, myself included, used to walk in there. And while we may have come for, you know, to hear the word of God or come in to sing songs of praise and do whatever, you know, get your kids their spiritual teachings or whatever your whatever your reason was for coming to do. You might have been troubled. You might have needed right. to get there. But we walked in there trying to project a clean version of ourselves. Yep. As opposed to coming in there with the real me. I feel like the time that we had away from church helped us swallow who the real us was Yep. without any type of avenue or environment to fake it. Mm -hmm. And what that did for me, and it's just me speaking, but I almost feel like you're saying the same thing. It helped me realize, like what I said earlier, what's the point of all of this? Meaning, what's the point of me trying to fake who I am for the sake of this building slash environment. Right. When, when God at home with me with who I really am. 100%. And I feel like, bro, I've talked to a lot of people during this time, man, where, and, and, and let me, let me bring, let, at that point, I feel like I need to bring clarity to what I first said, right? Is church really necessary? I said, no, because my point of the whole thing of saying that is, Church is not necessary for you to, to be with God. Yeah. It's not necessary. And it's not necessary for God to be with you, mm-hmm. the real you. You know what I'm saying? For anybody out there who, like, whatever it is that you know that you are and you feel like you had to walk into this environment and, like, fix it or put a little, you know, cuteness on it, smile a little bit more say hello a little bit more, hug a little bit more, be kind a little bit more, you really frustrated, you really pissed off, you really can't stand your family or you hurt, whatever that looked like. Church didn't feel safe for that at one point. Mm. And I feel like the pandemic stripped down everything and almost blew all of that fakeness up to the point where we don't have nothing left but who we are. Yep. And we legit now don't have don't even have a full-fledged environment back to go fake it anymore and for us in this house at least bro that was liberating yeah yeah you know what i'm saying it it just it put me in a space where like i feel extremely free to be the ratchet me not because i'm intentionally trying to be the ratchet me 
but because that's who I am. That's who you are, bro. Like, <laughs> no, I feel that. I feel that. And <clears throat> it's one of those things, right, where whenever I meet somebody that's unapologetically them, mm. I, I, like, love to be around them. Man, facts. Like, cause I mean, don't we? And we've we've had conversations on this podcast about like code switching and all of that. Whenever I come across somebody that like literally they are the same on Monday, Friday, mm-hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, it's refreshing, bro. It's refreshing. From seven a.m. to seven a.m. the next day, they are the same. Like that is so refreshing to see because for one, they haven't been tainted by this world, right? And, and I mean, when they unapologetically them. That could be good or bad. I still respect it in a way because it's like, bro, you're not, you don't care. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and not in a bad way, but like you just literally like, no, bro, this is me. Hate it or love it. If you don't like it, cool. But I'm not changing who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just who I am. Yeah. And, and so I think what the pandemic has showed me through not being in a building for church, I've learned to just be exactly who I am. If I don't want to rock with you right now, I don't want to rock with you right now. Sorry. Yep. I don't. And, and a part of that could just be that getting older too and getting that wisdom to where you're, you're comfortable and being you're like, I, it's just, it is what it is, but like, I don't have the time to fake the funk with you. It just, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not rocking with it. And so I think while there's still some things that I want to do better, in, in terms of like having a, a relationship with God, like there, there's definitely some things I want to do better. Um, but I am, I am okay with not walking in, into a church and, and I'm, I'm just really coming to grips with that. Like during this conversation, like I'm really okay with not having to, now I'm not, I'm not going to run from like, you know, like we want to go to church, like, Hey, let's go. Check yeah. out, you know what I mean? I, like it, it's not that, but for me to have that, I don't have. When 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 we left the last church that we were at collectively, I mm-hmm. left that situation saying, "I'm probably gonna chill on ministry for a while." Right? Mm-hmm. I was in youth ministry, mm-hmm. like you know, help helping with um, um, fifth and sixth graders. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. That's where I was at. I was you know in those teaching those classes and mentoring to those kids. Uh, fifth and sixth graders, right? So what's that? That's like 10 and 11 years old. But when I left that situation, I knew like, I'm probably going to chill on, on being involved in a church for a while. Right. And I think a lot of that just had to do with like, no, you know what? I'm only getting involved because I felt like I was supposed to get involved. It wasn't like a calling. It wasn't, you know, it was just like, oh man, this is the, it's like, you know how when you, um, you graduate college and you feel like the next best thing, I got to get a house, got to get a car. Get me. Yep. It, it felt like, oh, I'm involved in, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saved. I'm, I'm a member of a church. I need to get involved. Right. It, because yeah, that's yeah. the program that's been yeah. sold to us. Right. It's, right a prerequisite almost. It, it's a prerequisite. And so, you know, when I left that situation, I felt like, you know what? No, I can just, and, and it had to be okay with that. And I think it, it took a while for me to be okay with saying like, no, I don't want to get involved with the church. Like mm-hmm. I'll get involved in a church. And then, you know, I went to another church and when we were there, you know, it was just like, uh, y'all ain't talking to me, fam. And you know what church mm-hmm. I'm talking about too. It was like, cause we had yeah. just like, and I don't think anything was wrong with that church, but I was just like, no, y'all ain't talking to me at all. Like y'all don't really feel where I'm coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all nah, bro, I don't felt that way, bro. Yeah, y'all don't, y'all don't know oh. where I'm coming from, and, and you know, and like I said, the last church we was at, I really enjoyed that church, and, and um, and I'm okay with just like going periodically, but in, in terms of like, got to be there every Sunday, or I have to be like involved, bro. I'm I'm super cool on that. Um, I think for me, I, I don't think I, I can. I, I never say never because you know you get older and then certain things become more important to you right like you might need that yeah. sense of community again when you get a little bit older but as of right now bro i'm cool for real bro i ain't gonna lie bro as somebody who that's all i've known like and i'm not saying like i've just been a person at every point in my life that's just been what i what i describe as a kid like four or five days out of the week because that's not true i'm just saying i've always been a person that's been involved in church yeah, yeah, yeah. 
where I wrestled with that for so long, like almost to the point where I started to care what other people thought about me, like almost becoming aware that like, I kind of don't feel like all this is necessary. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to break that to, to, to other people. You know, I didn't know how to, um, honestly, I didn't know how to explain it to myself, but I, I felt like I would be judged for these new feelings, these new discoveries and low key, like almost in a weird way, wondered if I was even thinking correctly, if I was even pleasing God or, you know, that's real. Like I, I wrestle with it so much, man. Cause I'm like, man, does this mean, does this mean I'm less holy now? Does this mean I'm like, you know, not as, as potent spiritually mm-hmm. as I was before. And over and over, man, like I had to really consider everything. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, just, just lean into the reality, like, bro, I feel peace in this space. And, and nine times out of 10, when I'm feeling speed, peace, I'm feeling God. I'm feeling truth. I'm feeling yeah. what's for me. And everybody's path and everybody's story ain't the same. Right. But I know what's for me, you know. So like for me, this time has been more than ever an opportunity to connect with real people, Mm. you know. And, you know, I alluded earlier to what I what I felt and what you you alluded to, to what like being in church used to feel like used to feel like feel like performance or feel like being in an environment where there was a presentation. Yeah. Before you and that people walked in and out of there with that with that feeling. Right. But I felt like with all of that stripped down and removed, bro, I, I've never connected with people so true and so real in my lifetime. And I've never been the most real version of myself to present to people. Right. And that to me was was one of the most valuable things because it allowed me to be free enough to be flawed, yet true in front of people, if that makes sense, right? Like yeah. I can present this broken, um, messy and i don't mean messy like like getting mess i just i just mean like you know a person who ain't got it all together well i I don't have it figured out i'm not the pinnacle you know um i can present that to any and everybody and feel comfortable with it in myself and in return people get the genuine version of me and they can make a decision from there yeah it's never it's never been it's never been more freeing that's that's the key right there though right because when people see the real you Mm-hmm. And they don't feel like a representative is there. It, it it takes their guard down, right? So they can be who they are, right? And I'll tell you, like, for me personally, one of the things that I couldn't really, I don't want to say stand, but one of the things that I really had a hard time processing in church is that, bro, if you hear, step one is done. Mm-hmm. My thing is, how do we get people here, right? Okay. And, and so for me, I always look at like, man, there's a homeless guy right here. He ain't never walking in these build in these these doors. Mm. He's never doing it. And people walk past him every day and judge him. Like, mm. what you doing out here? Probably alcoholic. Probably strung out on drugs. I can get a job. You can get a job. You know. And, and yeah. so, even though I haven't done it as much as I I have, like, bro, I, if you ask me for money, even if I don't have it, I'm going to at least listen to why you want money. And I've mm. learned that that does more for that person than somebody just saying, like, I'm good and, and not even listening to them because you have a conversation. They just have like a person. You're treating them like a person, bro. And mm. and that that's value to them, because like I tell them, like, man, you know what, man, I, I honestly don't have any cash on me. It was like, and, and most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time, the reply was like, man, don't worry about it, bro. Like, God bless you. That's what they'll say to me. And I'll, you know, and and it's just like, wow. Like, no matter what this guy, girl, whoever going through, they still took the time out to be like, you know what? Hey, thank you. God bless you. Regardless of Mm -hmm. the outcome, regardless of money or anything, food or whatever. The other thing is, you know, I used to struggle with church being all about everybody there is like perfect right like everybody for the most part Mm -hmm. everybody good Mm -hmm. and it's like right i would 
especially during those times when we were like outside, outside, right? You would have people that that think like, oh, bro, like you're a Christian, bro. Like what you doing in the club? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, like bro, what I'm, you doing? Drinking? Me. Yeah. Like, what yeah, you yeah. Doing drinking? I'm like, huh? And, 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 you know, a lot of that is just ignorance because they just don't know. They're going off of what they've been, you know, told their whole life. It's like, oh, you can't yeah. do this. You can't do that. And to be fair, Christianity at one point just sound, sounded boring to people because they felt like I had to be on this straight and narrow all day, every day. And it's like, no, you gotta bro, be perfect. that's not real. Ain't nobody perfect, bro. Like, literally yeah. come as you are. Like, this is who you are right now. This is what you're struggling with, bro. Like, you got a, you got a drug addiction problem. Porn addiction, alcoholism, like cool. Let's talk about it, and let, yeah. let's let's learn from that. I'm not gonna judge you. I can't judge you. Cool. Let's have a conversation. If you take something from this conversation, cool. If not, I'm planning to see for somebody else to come in and, and, and water. And I think that's the part that we have to be okay with. That yeah. even in this season that we in right now of like not being in a physical building, it's like, bro, you know what? All those times that you were in that building and you got that good word and you got that good worship and all of that, those were just seeds. Now, now that you by yourself, you got to really yeah. trust in God to like, you know what I'm saying? To like water yeah. all those seeds and like really get that relationship and grow with him by yourself as opposed to depending on all of these people and, and these theatrics to help you grow. Because they, at right. the end of the day, they just theatrics. It, it means... It's almost it's funny because it's almost like, man, like we we previously were so used to going to this building that had all the seeds that were supposed to be growing in it. Like, why are you putting all the trees in, in into this one spot mm -hmm. as opposed to planting all these seeds all over the place? You right. know, like it don't make sense, bro. And and hear me, like I'm not saying that churches are not necessary because they are for somebody. For somebody. Right? Somebody. Right, right. Somebody, somebody needs that. Somebody needs that environment to spark them. Somebody needs that environment to hear their word because that's all they got. That's all they ever known. I don't devalue that. That's for you. That's for them. And it's, it's what it should be. And God bless you. Like, go get it. Go be a part of it. Go do what you do. For me personally, it's not that I will never utilize that space. It's not that my kids will never need that space, but I feel like my perspective is is now out of the box mm -hmm. and i realize god is in more places than inside of that building and god can use more people than are inside of that building and and you know it's just it's now seen it, it's honestly god showing us how much bigger he is and how he's not bound to the human standards of you know following him mm -hmm. Like what, like he's big enough for following him to look like a lot of, a lot of different things. Kanye is one of the biggest examples. Cult, the biggest cultural artist that we've ever known in our lifetime. Been a whole lot of different things in front of everybody, right? And yet all of a sudden you clearly see God has a grasp on his heart in a way that, you know, a lot of people almost either question or don't feel as genuine especially you know he had a lot of antics during the you know black lives matter times and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. blah 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 and so what like here he is doing what he does and still being who he is and guess what you know he reaching a whole lot of people that wouldn't be reached inside of that building for me bro that's that's an example yeah. and that's the part that people um fail to 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 realize a lot of times right they look at who Kanye West is yes mm -hmm. he's flawed at the end of the day he's flawed he got all these issues whatever but I'll, I'll take it surface super surface level Kanye West was able to put out an album where he told I'm just gonna throw a ballpark number 15 to 20 features y'all can't cuss he did they cuss they didn't right like and, and, right. and so while we we might want to look at like I'm I'm not even looking at it from a Christianity standpoint I'm just like yeah, yeah. he made a conscious decision to say like on this album there's no cursing and so I want y'all to come prepared to not curse on this album 
and because yeah. of who he is, they look at him like this is an opportunity that like, I, bro, I just okay, I skip the curses now. For some people, they might just look at that as like, oh, okay, whatever. But what what I feel that he was able to do in that moment is show them like it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. You can do it. And now, right. not saying that they're gonna go and, and make a whole album and not cuss on their album, or they, you know, gonna talk about Jesus on their album. But he proved that it can be done. And by him proving that it can be done on a massive scale, now he's gonna inspire some artists to be like, "No, nah, bro, I ain't gotta do it. I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do what Kanye just did." Right. And and that speaks volumes, bro. That's like that's literally using your power and influence to make people better you know what i mean okay. so it's, it's artists that felt like they had to choose to be a christian artist or mm -hmm. just a just a hip-hop artist and now they feel like oh shoot i can just do hip-hop i mean right. i can't talk about god right you know, i can't talk about things that are real to me because if kanye west can do it i can do it exactly and, and that's what i feel like this this um this new experience of of Church is, and, and I know we're gonna talk about this again, man. Like we we, we almost gotta. I legit want to bring a, a pastor in here and see what what their side of the story would be. You know? Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I, but absolutely. but I feel like church almost has to change because the people have clearly changed, and the needs are different now, right? Like, um, like there are still people who like couldn't wait to get back in the building because that was their crutch, but they're more. There are, I, I would beg to differ that there are more people like you and I post pandemic than there are people that's ready to just go back to the norm. Mm -hmm. Cause people, cause, cause the world has changed, bro. Like, 100%. so how does, how does the church be the same church? They can't be yeah. not if, not if you want to be like, not if you're really there for the sake of being there for the people, because the people right. got different needs now and it's clear cut, you know? So yeah. Yeah. No, that's dope, man. I um I think we can leave it there. We definitely gotta have a part two of this conversation. Um Yeah, we do. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So let's see. Um trying to go through here and see if we have a uh, ask a black man. Okay. Um <laughs> Okay, this is actually this is a pretty good question. All right. Um what are things you should not say at your own wedding? <laughs> it was like a random question. Funny. <laughs> what? Oh man. I got it. I got a few. You want you want to take that to the Patreon? Um Yeah, yeah. Let's take that to Patreon because we can have a little fun with that. We can oh, have let me give a preview. Let me give a preview. Okay, go one. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You shouldn't thank all of your exes. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do that, please. No, like no, you no. try to make a speech, leave them out of the moment. Yeah, leave them out. Leave them out, bro. On that note, we go switch over to Patreon. So look, first off, thank y'all. Really, thank y'all um, for tuning in, man. We really do appreciate y'all. For those that don't know, we have a Patreon family. We call them the Thinkers, right? Um, you come over there. It, we have a couple of tiers. You can choose whatever tier you want to. We appreciate your support. But we have our Black Afterthoughts um, podcast. So it's a separate podcast. Uh, separate episodes we go over there and, and we just act a fool so y'all get to see us with the curtain kind of you know the curtain pulled off a little bit where we uh yeah. we really had that homie talk um at like we um back at 309 in the village of georgia state and really just be kicking it so uh yeah, i know what 309 was yeah, you know, yeah. You know, if you know you know if you know you know man so look if y'all want to hear this conversation make sure y'all go over to patreon uh subscribe there and, and we about to get a little crazy with it but <laughs> if not we'll see y'all next week <laughs>